and this is Jen Geigley Knits. And today I have a finished object to show you and it's really, 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 really good. This color, first of all, is perfection. Um, this is the Morcella Cardigan by Whitney Hayward. And I finished it last night. It is knit in Atlas yarn, which is by Modern Daily Knitting. This is their yarn, it is Rambouillet. It is worsted. Um, this is a two ounce skein, 145 yards. Um, this knits on a six to eight US needle. This pattern calls for a US seven, and I ended up getting gauge right away, which is the best. Um, this is all knit in what they call cartridge rib. And one of the best things about this rib, A, super like bouncy, squishy, and cozy. Like it's just such a comfortable, with this yarn, um, the ridges, and it's just like super soft, cozy, comfy. It's like the best feeling. Um, and the other good thing, cartridge rib is one of those ribs where you just slip a stitch. And so when you're knitting flat, there's no purling. I know it's like so it really goes quickly especially on a us7 um because it's this bouncy squishy rib that really builds quickly you're just slipping a stitch it's like knit stitches and slip stitches and then um the pattern has you knitting the sleeves flat so you keep doing that but i did decide to do the sleeves in the round because i didn't want to see seam the sleeve so i know look how nice that looks <laughs> so i did the sleeves in the round so then you do have to purl but I don't even care because you're still slipping stitches and it's like a purl row every other row. It's not a big deal. But the whole body is like no purling. The whole body. Okay, so let's look again. Um, I made it a little longer. Maybe I didn't even make it longer. It's just like I kind of followed the pattern exactly. Um, it does not have like a tight rib at the bottom. Um, some people have added one, but I kind of like it like this. Uh... I did everything pretty close to the way it was written. I adjusted a couple things. Um, this, this body is knitted from the bottom up and then you actually kind of extend this out and knit that and do shoulder shaping. Then you pick up stitches for the sleeves and I still have to, I haven't totally blocked this because I was so excited to wear it and I had to take pictures this morning for Modern Daily Knitting. So I just kind of threw it on and I probably should still wet block it, but it's, it, it looks pretty good right out of the gate, honestly. I'm pretty happy with it. Then um, this button band is knit completely separately. Um, it's a flat stockinette piece. And like right now it looks perfectly, but it's um, double, it's like knit double. So you fold it over this edge and seam it. And it makes like this nice thick band that's very sturdy and substantial and holds your buttons up nicely, which it feels really nice and finished and really good. And around here, it's just um, kind of sewn on afterwards. I will say sewing this on was tricky. And I saw a lot of notes about that on Ravelry that a lot of people kind of struggle with it. It's, it's a lot. I've sewn on button bands before. Usually they're like one by one rib. Um, this one's different and with all the shaping here, it's a little tricky to get it to look right and mine still isn't perfect, so don't stare at it. But um, I think it looks good now where it, I mean, it looks like pretty decent. One side's a little better than the other, but we're just gonna not worry about that. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of a struggle for some reason 
to seam it nicely and I tried like 45 times not probably even exaggerating um, I ripped it off and did it a, a lot of times I tried mattress stitch I tried I think I tried a running stitch I tried there's one way she said you could do like mattress stitch for the front of the band and then when you flip it over do whip stitch on the back of the band I tried that I tried a good combination of all the stitches then I tried just um knitting it or not knitting it seaming it folded together like not seaming the front and then the back and just all at once that didn't turn out so well either so <laughs> I stayed up really late last night trying to figure out the best way to do it but I think I got it now and I'm happy with it perfection is not like the goal we are not machines we are hand knitters and this is um, still such a lovely sweater. I'm just so happy about it. I'm not like the finishing queen. I'm comfortable with seaming and sewing seams. Like I don't, I don't shy away from that, but, um, this was a different level of finishing for me. <laughs> and I just, I don't know why I was struggling with it so much, but it's okay. Now it's all right. And I don't care. And I just, I steamed it a tiny bit. I'm going to wet block it. And then, um, maybe I won't wet block it because I don't want it to grow any more than this. It's a nice, like, fit right here. I don't want the sleeves to get too big or anything, but I like, it's like a little, like not, it's not loose and it's not tight. It's kind of just right. So maybe I won't block it because I think I just want to keep it the way it is. You know, when you just get the right thing and it's, I don't know. Another thing I have to show you is the buttons that I chose. I never ever use fun buttons. I always use like plain wooden buttons, but I happen to have four of these turtle buttons, like a little tortoise. And you know, back here, my friend Bimo is our pet Russian tortoise. And so, I don't know, I've been saving these buttons for quite a few years. They're from Katrinkles. And they've been sitting in my little button jar. And I'm like, maybe they're the right size. Because I was going to use some other wooden buttons I had there, just plain but they were a little bit too big because these buttonholes are not super huge. And these are the double buttonholes. I'll kind of show you the double button band. So you're, you're making two, you're making a band like this with two holes in it. I don't know if that makes sense. Knitted flat and then seamed on later. Anyway, so the buttonholes line up and you can, anyway. So yeah, there's, it's not a very big buttonhole. And then I was like, I wonder if those turtle buttons would fit and they like are an exact perfect fit so um I had to use them they're so cute look at the little stitches the little tiny thread coming through it's so adorable I just love these buttons and I love that I found the perfect project to use them on it's kind of a special little project anyway let me give you some details about this pattern um it comes in 10 sizes which is really great maybe even 11 sizes 10 or 11 sizes and it starts um, with a 37 inch bust all the way up to a 68 inch bust. And you want a little bit of ease. I made um, the second size in, which is pretty typical for me. And I used six or seven skeins of this. Let me look, I wrote it down. I'm gonna put all the project notes in my Ravelry page, which I have been really bad at lately. Um, but I think it's really helpful to see other people's notes because I looked at other people's notes for this project quite a bit on Ravelry. This one took seven skeins of Atlas and the color is called Pear. And this is my favorite, favorite, favorite color, um, as you can tell, like by my house. <laughs> this is like a perfect chartreuse yellow. This yarn is amazing. It's so lightweight and so not itchy. Um, this feels like store-bought. It feels so comfortable and cozy. Um, that I kind of want to make another one of these, maybe in a neutral, like oatmeal color. So I'm going to go look at the Atlas shades again and see if I want to do another one because as much trouble as this was to seem, I would totally do it again. It was worth it. I don't care now. I, I had some troubles along the way, but, um, it was all worth it. This is going to be such a wearable card cardigan. I know I'm going to wear it a ton. I love a cardigan over a t-shirt with jeans. This is just like 
you know, everyday wear around the house or out and about. It's just the perfect outfit, but a really, really fun color to kind of brighten up my day. But I also want one in like oatmeal. <laughs> so I know they have colors like, let me look, they have um, some good neutral grays and browns. They've got shale, cork, pebble is a gray, and cedar. Cedar is like a really nice rusty brown and that would look really cool too so i'm gonna have to think if i want to do this again it might be too soon right now to like think about that but um yeah love the pockets they're just two little simple pockets that you seam on they're not super perfect so don't look too closely but um sleeves turned out just the right length love that um these sleeves are so i said before you just pick up in the round right here um and then you continue with the cartridge rib down and this is one of those sleeves where there's no shaping here. It's just straight. Then down here you decrease and you go to the tiny needle for the ribbing as just a one by one rib. Um, so the body is knitted on a US seven needle and the button band and the cuff is knitted on a US four needle. So you get that big difference. Um, and it really is fun to see this yarn in both needle sizes because it really changes the fabric so much. Like, the difference between this like chewy, dense button band, it just feels really nice. And then this kind of airy, bouncy, looser rib. Um, it's fun to see what, it, what one yarn can do on two different needles. Um, this looks good buttoned and unbuttoned. Like I love it both ways. It's really easy like just to throw on. Like seriously, it's so perfect. Ignore my like comments about the difficulty. Like <laughs> I think it's just fresh in my mind because I was working on it last night, like till 3 a.m. It was one of those. <laughs> like I had to finish it. Um, also, I was writing um, a story about this for Modern Daily Knitting. Um, it's called I Made It With Atlas. Uh, to show kind of some patterns you can do with this yarn that are just different and things you can try. And so I told them I was going to knit this card again. And they're like, do you want to share it? And I was like, sure. <laughs> so it's always fun to kind of share your experience. But yeah, look how nice unbuttoned. Just throw it on. Um, it hangs so nicely in the back. I love the length. It could even be a little cropped if you wanted to make it a little shorter. Um, but I kind of like a longer layer. So cozy. So good for every day. I'm so happy with it. I don't know what else to say. Um, uh, oh, there was a couple things. Well, I don't know. <laughs> with my struggles, I will just mention, I think there's maybe some, a little, maybe a couple errors in the neck shaping directions um, because I saw some other people on Ravelry talking about this as well and I ran into that too. Um, it's not horrible and you can kind of figure it out and there is a chart to reference as well. I think there's just something where like one side was turning out really good and even and the other one was a little bit off and weird and you're like maybe that's not quite right so I don't know. Um, so you might just want to check the Ravelry notes of other people um, but it's usually something you can kind of figure out as you go. Like I just use common sense like oh that should be like a knit two together there and a slip or you try to I don't know. So it wasn't it was like I don't know, not major. And I hate to do that because like, I write patterns and I, it's so like sad when a lot of people are like having an issue or if there's something you find wrong, but I don't know. I just like to be honest about my experience. Um, and I always check other people's Ravelry notes, which is so nice. And that's why I'm gonna add mine out there too. But if you keep an eye on what you're doing here, it's not bad. And it is like a deep V kind of situation with the shaping. And so you're going straight here and then you just slightly go out here, up to the shoulders, and then there's some shoulder shaping up here um, to make it sit nicely on your shoulders. And what else was I gonna say? Oh, so when you knit this button band on its own, you're just knitting it you know, over here separately, completely separately on US fours. Um, they tell you how long to make it and of course I was holding it up to the edge of this to make sure I was close and then I left that band on the needles which was so smart 
So as I was seaming it onto the cardigan, I kept it attached to the yarn, live stitches, so I could adjust the length when you get over here. Cause you know how when you seam something, it never ends up where you think it will. It was too short, too long, whatever. So it's nice not to bind it off and then be wrong. Cause I did have to add like another inch when I got down here, this side, I guess. Um, so it was nice to just have it ready to go and I could just make it exactly the length I needed and that kind of saved me some time. And yeah, when you do sew that on, definitely start on your buttonhole end um, so that you don't end up with like a lopsided thing hanging down with your buttonholes that you really need to be in the right place. So start with the buttonholes, come around and then finish with this side where you can kind of adjust it. What other notes did I have? Removable stitch markers are your friends. Um, this is a reversible rib, so it looks, that's my stitches, sorry. It looks the same on each side, um, but it's different because it's a two row repeat. So you're just like staggering this little slip stitch column. Um, and so it's really good to mark your right side because this looks the same when you set it down. You can't remember sometimes where you're at. So mark your right side if you're making this. It's just helpful to start off that way and then you always know where you're at. That's it. This is my new sweater. I love it so much. I encourage you to give it a try if you really like this. And if you're like a finishing queen and you're super good at seaming and doing all that stuff, you won't have any problems. Um, like it's really totally fine. I don't know what my problem is. I think I'm just tired <laughs> and like whatever. But look how good this looks, honestly. Right? I'm so happy with how it turned out. I'm already thinking about seriously making another, like in gray or tan, because it's just so comfortable to just throw on at home. I will be wearing this all day. Um, you can make it long, you can make it short. Like, let's just look at it. If it was up here like this, that would be cute as well. You can skip the pockets if you don't want pockets. Um, so yeah, thank you for hanging out with me today and checking out my new finished object, my new cardigan. It's the Morcella cardigan by Whitney Hayward and it's knitted in Modern Daily Knitting Atlas yarn, which if you haven't tried this yet, it is the perfect sweater yarn if you need worsted weight. Um, it comes in a big, nice palette of colors, um, anything from neutrals to brights to everything in between. Um, and it's just my favorite sweater yarn because it is light, it is soft and cozy. It's not too hot, like not warm, but you know, keeps you warm when you want to be warm. Um, so definitely go check it out. It's kind of my favorite now. And this color pair, like it's the perfect chartreuse yellow. Um, and go check out the Modern Daily Knitting blog. I have a whole story write-up thing there about knitting this cardigan and the whole process and the buttons and everything. Um, so go check that out as well and, and subscribe to their newsletter and their blog posts. It's, it's all just like the most amazing content. And they have something called snippets on the weekends where you can like catch up with things and get all the knitting content. And I wake up and have coffee and read snippets every weekend, which is just like my routine now, but they have so many good things there, so many good yarns, um, and their field guides are amazing. So go check out my friends at Modern Daily Knitting. Um, thank you for hanging out with me today, and I will see you in my next video. Thanks. Bye.